So, what is the problem? Sir, three patients have come with the same set of symptoms. Sir, they have fever, vomiting and diarrhea. Where are the other two patients? They went to the bathroom. Where are you? Valli, Eppan. Where are you coming from? Vairi Valli, Joran, and one of them is one of them is one of them. I'll tell you a little bit. Tell me a little bit. Why are you eating a little bit? Sir, they are eating a little bit. Thanks, Ram. Patru Pa Biryani Sopta. And the Mariyapan Biryani? Yes, sir. How did you get the correct one? I got a lot of money and I got a lot of money. I kind of forgot about the pathogenesis of typhoid. Let me watch a video on it. What does the term enteric fever really mean? Enteric fever is a serious infection marked by intestinal inflammation and ulceration. It encompasses typhoid fever caused by infection with bacteria Salmonella typhi and paratyphoid fever caused by Salmonella paratyphi A and B. Statistically, children and young adults are more commonly affected. Travelers who visit endemic areas are also commonly infected. It is interesting to know that there is usually a higher incidence of enteric fever in urban areas than rural. The mode of transmission of the bacteria is primarily fecal-oral. Rarely asymptomatic carriers may also spread the infection. Salmonella typhi is a gram-negative bacillus, which is highly motile thanks to its peritrichus flagella. It exhibits a characteristic swarming motility due to the presence of rotating flagella. Salmonella has three important antigens useful for lab detection, namely flagella antigen H, somatic antigen O in the cell wall, and surface antigen VI, which is the virulence factor. It is a facultative anaerobe. When a person ingests bacteria present in the contaminated food, the bacilli reach the gut and attach to microvilli of ileal mucosa. It causes damage and inflammation of enterocytes causing diarrhea. These bacteria are then taken up by macrophages and dendritic cells and travel to the mesenteric lymph nodes where they multiply. The bacilli travel through the lymphatics and the thoracic duct to enter the bloodstream where they release cytokines causing fever. This is the phase of primary bacteremia. Once in the blood, Salmonella typhi invades the gallbladder, liver, spleen, bone marrow, lungs and kidneys. Through the kidneys, the bacilli get excreted in urine, whereas from the gallbladder, bacteria get continuously released into intestine via bile. They pass through the intestine and get excreted through feces and also invade the Peyer's patches and lymphoid follicles of the ileum, which become inflamed and necrotic. The tissue sloughs off, resulting in characteristic typhoid ulcers. Lymphocytosis is also noted near the Peyer's patches. After an incubation period of around 14 days, patients present primarily with complaints of fever, which shows a characteristic stepladder pattern in which fever falls at night but goes up higher each day. There may also be complaints of headache, myalgia and chills. Patients will most likely present with abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting. Clinically, the presence of rose spots on the chest and abdomen which fade on the application of pressure, hepatosplenomegaly and mild bradycardia indicates typhoid. GI ulcers, intestinal bleeding, perforation, meningitis and cerebellar ataxia are a few complications that may arise. It is important for us to know the difference between typhoid ulcers and tubercular ulcers for acute diagnosis. Typhoid ulcers are usually oval shaped and swollen with soft edges whereas tubercular ulcers are pale, irregularly shaped and painful. Malaria can be ruled out if the fever shows a paroxysmal waxing and waning, unlike typhoid fever which keeps increasing every day. Let me check the patient's lab reports. Let's take a look at the lab investigations available to detect the presence of salmonella species in infected persons. Non-specific blood tests such as blood count and blood smear show lymphocytosis and neutropenia. The reliable diagnostic tests for salmonella typhi vary from week to week. In the first week since onset of symptoms, blood culture and bone marrow culture show positive results. Blood culture therefore is the most reliable test for detection for salmonella typhi. Another method called clot culture, which is a modification of blood culture, is found to be more sensitive than blood culture. In the second week, serological tests like PIDAL test for antibody detection turn positive. It is a type of indirect tube agglutination test used to detect antibodies against known antigen in the patient's serum. Only in the third week and fourth week do the stool and urine culture show positive results as the salmonella bacilli begin to be excreted. Non-hemolytic moist colonies are observed in blood agar. Meconchi agar is a low selective media which shows round, translucent, pale and non-lactose fermenting colonies. Highly selective media include deoxycholate citrate agar which shows non-lactose fermenting pale colonies with black centers and xylose lysine deoxycholate agar which produces red colonies with black centers. Wilson Blair green bismuth sulfide medium produces characteristic jet black colonies with a metallic sheen due to production of H2S. Paratyphy A which does not form H2S produces green colored colonies. This medium is useful to selectively isolate salmonella bacilli from a sample containing many other microbes. To aid in treatment plan for typhoid, antibiogram tests are performed on bacteria 
to check for susceptibility to antibiotics such as ampicillin, ciprofloxacin, nalidexic acid, cortimoxazole, clonafenicol, etc. Guys, what are the patients admitted in our ward? The three patients all are positive for typhoid. Again, we are getting a lot of typhoid patients these two weeks. Didn't they mention the same shop? Wait a second. This is Maria Bin's biryani shop, right? Didn't they mention about it? Anna, biryani thindu pochma naalik vandrunga. Illa na biryani vaangrathukaga varren. Pinna, kadandha varum inga hospital la rendu moonu patients admit aayirundanga. Seri, avangalukku test panni paathadilla typhoid positive nu. Adhukku naan enna pannanum? Avanga kitta visarichadilla unga kadaila da saapta da solranga. Adanaala neenga oru chinna test pannikittingana nalla irukum nan nenikiren. இல்ல எனக்கு புரியல என்னென்ன நோயால ஏக்க பாக்குறீங்க இல்ல நான் அப்படி சொல்ல வரல என்னாச்சு காஸ் பண்ணுங்க பாக்குறீங்களா சில பேருக்கு டைஃபாய்டு இருக்கு இல்ல 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 நீங்க பேஸ் எனக்கு சரியா பண்ணல நீங்க நாளைக்கு வாங்க இப்போ எனக்கு இப்போ கடை பண்ணு நீங்க கேள கேளுங்க 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 வெயிட் a second this is biryani shop maria pen right what is he doing here நீங்க எப்படி அம்மா நீங்களா நீங்க சொல்ல நான் கேக்கலையே என் தங்கச்சி கொஞ்சம் நல்லா உடம்பு சரியில்லை ஒரு மூணு வாரமா ஒரே வயதால போகுது காய்ச்சலா இருக்கு நான் சமைச்சு சாப்பாடுனாலதான் இப்படி ஆச்சு அவளுக்கு டெஸ்ட் எடுத்ததுல ஏதோ டைஃபாய்ட் மாதிரி அப்படின்னு சொல்றாங்க எனக்கும் ஏதோ டெஸ்ட் எடுத்தாங்க ஐயா உங்களுக்கு நாலு டெஸ்ட் எடுத்துச்சுல டைஃபாய்டுக்கு அது நாலுமே பாசிட்டிவா வந்திருக்கு எதேர்ச்சியா எப்போ இன்னைக்கு காய்ச்சல் வந்திருக்கா உங்களுக்கு காய்ச்சல்லாம் ஞாபகம் இல்லை சார் அது ஒரு ஒரு வருஷம் இல்லைனா அதுக்கு மேலதான் அதுக்கும் மேலயா ஆமா சார் சரி சரி உட்காந்துக்கோங்க சோ ஃபாலோயிங் பேஷண்ட் It was tested for blood cultures, stools, urine, and vital test, and all four are positive. So this indicates that he has the infection for more than four weeks. Now, since I asked him a question, did he notice whether he had any fever? He hasn't had any symptoms for more than one year. So that means that he is an asymptomatic chronic carrier. There are so many typhoid patients over here in the ward. What do you think the pharmacotherapy is? The pharmacotherapy of enteric fever includes fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin. These inhibit bacterial DNA gyrase and topoisomerase in preventing the DNA replication and repair. Cephalosporins like ceftriaxone inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. Macrolides like azithromycin bind to the 50S ribosomal subunit and inhibit protein synthesis. Carbapenems inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. Chloramphenicol is no longer preferred drug because of the development of resistance against it and its serious ADRs like gray baby syndrome. Adequate hydration, antiparatics for fever and careful follow up is also required. There are a few drug resistant strains of Salmonella typhi like multi drug resistant Salmonella typhi which is resistant to chloramphenicol, ampicillin and cortimoxazole and nalidixic acid resistant strain which shows low susceptibility to ciprofloxacin. The drug of choice in case of fluoroquinolone resistance is azithromycin and ceftriaxone. The recommended treatment for carriers includes a 28 day course of ciprofloxacin. WHO recommends typhoid vaccine program to reduce the incidence of Salmonella typhi and its antibiotic resistant strains. One dose is recommended at least 2 weeks before travel to endemic areas. Available vaccines are typhoid conjugate vaccine, TY21A, a live oral vaccine and Y capsular polysaccharide vaccine. Prevention is better than cure. Go to the hospital if you have fever, diarrhea, vomiting and stomach ache. Drink and eat well cooked water and food. Follow hand hygiene and use clean cutlery. டாக்டர் நான் சமைச்ச சாப்பாடுனால தான் எல்லாருக்கும் டைஃபாய்ட் பரவுதுன்னு சொன்னீங்க எனக்கு சமையல் தான் புலப்பே இனி நான் என்ன பண்ணுறேன் டாக்டர் உங்களுக்கு நாலு வாரத்துக்கு ஆன்டிபயோட்டிக்ஸ் கொடுத்துருக்கோம் அந்த மாத்திரையை மட்டும் சாப்பிடுங்க நாலு வாரம் கழிச்சு ஃபாலோஅப்புக்கு வந்துடுங்க அந்த நாலு வாரத்துக்கு நீங்கள் எந்த சமையலும் பண்ணாதீங்க சரியா தேங்க்யூ டாக்டர் Yeah, no, no, no.